you might be wondering why a 12 year old is teaching you about writing today. Well, my name is Adora Speetalk, and at the age of seven, I published my first book. It's called Flying Fingers Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And more recently, I published a second book called Dancing Fingers, uh, and it is a book that I co authored with my older sister, Adriana, and it is poetry. So I really enjoy writing stories of all kinds and poems as well. And one of the most important things to remember when you're writing is to make it descriptive. And one way you can do that is by including lots of details about the five senses. So who would like to raise your hand and tell me what do you know about descriptive writing? Anyone? Descriptive writing has lots of detail. Very good. I'm sorry? It usually has the five senses. It usually has the five senses. Excellent job. So you guys are already off to a great start. Now here's another question. Why should we write descriptive? Interesting. 
So before, you might say something like, my sister had a smile on her face. Raise your hand if your sister has smiled before. I see everybody's raising their hand, or at least anybody who's, who has a sister. Now, what about, my sister smiled like a cunning chihuahua. Has anyone ever had their sister smile like a cunning chihuahua before? I see some raised hands, but you know what? Um, smiling like a cunning chihuahua, that gives you kind of a funny image in your head, and that's kind of unique because not everybody has a sister who can smile like a cunning chihuahua. So it makes it more lively, it makes it more interesting. Details make a story unique or special. Before, my grandmother drove us to the amusement park. Well, you can get your grandmother, your grandfather, your parents drive to the amusement park, uh, really, most of the time, but my grandmother drove us to the amusement park in her old Dodge Dart, which smelled like a poodle. That is something kind of interesting, because a Dodge Dart is a really old car, and not everyone has a car that smells like a poodle. Details make a story exciting. Before, the cat jumped on me. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever had a cat jump on you. I see a lot of raised hands. Well, it's much more exciting if we say something like, the huge hairy cat jumped on me, sinking its claws into my sweater. In fact, if we wanted, we could even insert a little blood-stained clause into my sweater, if you wanted to make it really dramatic. And uh, this is a stuffed animal, don't worry, I did not literally get attacked. Oops. Sorry about that. So, now that we know the importance of details, I wanted to make a kind of visual and find a picture that we could find details from. So this is a little girl, and how many details can you point out to me? Sleep. Yawn wildly 
in the forest. Great! Okay, so we've added some more details to this sentence. From the tiger yawn, we've turned it into the huge, bright orange tiger yawned wildly in the forest. Which I think is a better sentence. It has much more detail. My sister yelled at me. I know a lot of you have sisters. Has your sister ever yelled at you? I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. So what does your sister look like when she yells at you? Because um, what you feel, 
For instance, how a tiger feels when you stroke it, that would be furry. Of course, you probably wouldn't want to get that close to a tiger. But um, ask yourself, next time you're writing about something, what do things feel like? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it polished? Is it hard? What do things taste like? So raise your hand if you ate breakfast this morning. Raise your hand if you'd like to tell me about it. What did it taste like? It tasted good. It tasted good? Can we be a little more descriptive? So how was it good? Delicious. Delicious, so it tasted good. Really but um, um, what about, how did it, um, what, well, so let's start, what kind of food was it? Oh, a cinnamon roll. So it would probably be really sweet and, and kind of, and cinnamon rolls, they almost melt in your mouth. Well, I'm a little bit chewy in that, but yeah, so there are lots of things you can add about what it tastes like, even what it feels like in your mouth. What about a really gross meal, anybody? Who would like to tell me about a really gross meal? What did that taste like? They have 
lots of words you've gone over, so maybe vocabulary. Well, that sounds uh, fun. Now, next, um, there's also some more sentences that you want to consider. Oops. What do things sound like? So ask yourself, what do things sound like when you're in your house, when you're in the classroom? What do things sound like in your classroom right now? comes on and it sounds like a vacuum. And in my house, sometimes my mom does the vacuuming and it sounds really noisy and high-pitched because we have a weird vacuum. Um, and so yeah, you can ask yourself, what do things sound like everywhere? What about in your classroom right now? What do things sound like? Yeah. Um, it's pretty quiet. There's not much disturbance. So maybe if you're sitting next to someone who is um, doing stuff with paper or crumpling it up, that might be a bit of noise. So even small noise, you can think about that. What do things sound like? Okay, so now that we have thought about the five senses, how do you think we could revise the creature entered the area sentence? So remember, the creature entered the area sentence. Well, we can improve it by specifying words. So instead of saying creature, we could say human, um, an animal, and even that's not quite specific enough. So what kind of animal? Well, here are a few animals. Prairie dogs, gophers, rabbits, guinea pigs, giraffes, zebras. So let's say our creature is, uh, what do you think it should be? Giraffe. Giraffe, yeah. okay. Let's say our creature is a giraffe. <laughs>
So here is an example revised passage. Um, so instead of the creature entering the area, it might go like, three-year-old Kelpie was a shiny dark brown bunny with gargantuan ears and a small twitchy nose. His back, he backflipped animatedly into the basement with a loud thud. The basement smelled of rotten eggs. Poor Kelpie was rather miserable because an egg had landed on his head. So you might even give more details about the plot. So let's try it ourselves. Here's the passage, it's not very descriptive. We made a tree house, the tree house is in a tree, the tree house is nice, it has windows and a door. So as we know, tip number one is add details. So do you have any other questions about the tree house? Let's make a list. What are some of our other questions about the tree house?
long wooden table. Okay, what else is there? If you if you could build a tree house, if you, this was your dream tree house, what would you put in there? treehouse, 
you may hear music booming from the treehouse's advanced sound system. But even the loudest music can't drown out the noise of happy crickets and birds chirping outside. So, there we go. Now for some review. When we write descriptively, it's really our world. So we can write about all kinds of things. About some ridiculous things like monsters or backflipping rabbits. In descriptive writing, we should include what things look like, sound like, smell like, feel like, and taste like, or the senses. So when you are writing and you see in your writing that you have a passage like tiger yawn or my mom was mad, think what did my mom look like? What? How loud was the tiger's yawn? How big was the treehouse? All of those things. And you will get some more descriptive writing. So add details, add details about the senses, and you're off on your way. Great descriptive writing. Um, now, who would like to tell me one thing you learned today?
Am I thinking of writing another book? Yes, I am definitely thinking of writing some more books. I'd like to have another book of poetry, uh, maybe some more short stories. Yeah, definitely thinking of writing another book. And it gives you a lot of power. I once wrote a poem. It was called Where Writing Can Take You. 
or sorry, where reading can take you, and, and really it goes both ways, because reading takes you to um, new worlds and writing allows you to create them. So um, definitely it is a lot of control and it gives you experiences that you might otherwise not be able to have. So for instance, I might not be able to, or I might not even want to experience the freezing cold of Siberia or something like that, but I can read about it and there I am. So definitely reading um, can give you that experience. It gives you a lot of fun and reading about things that interest you. You can learn more about the subject and you can experience it in many ways you might not otherwise. As to writing, uh, writing allows you to really explore the ideas that you have in your mind, to explore what you would like to do with those words, and it lets you um, have freedom. It's kind of like um, being able to weave a tapestry of thought, I guess, of words, and um, create a really beautiful piece. So I hope that you all um, enjoy your reading and writing, um, and remember that you don't, know, you don't really have to worry what will other people think, what will my parents say? What will my family think? You, you just write for yourself in the beginning, and then you can always edit it afterwards. So really enjoy it, have fun with it, and write descriptively. That's the important thing. <laughs> um, and I hope that you all have a great day. Thank you so very much.